brought to you by Mark Logic. Now, here are your hosts, Jeff Frick and Jeff Kelly. Welcome back, everybody. We're live here in uh, the Silicon Valley area at MarkLogic 2015, MarkLogic World. Uh, I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon. I'm here with my co-host for the day, Jeff Frick. Uh, and we're joined with, by our next guest. Her name is Beverly Jameson. She is the Senior Director of IT Architecture and Publishing Solutions at the American Psychological Association. That's a mouthful. It's a mouthful. We're happy to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. Pleased to be here. So, Jeff and I were looking into your background a little bit before the interview, and we see that you, uh, your background is in graph theory and classic combinatorics. Now, Jeff and I looked at each other and we said, first question, got to understand, what is combinatorics? Um, graph theory is actually a portion of the field of combinatorics. It's the larger field of combinations, permutations, and a lot of discrete math. Um, on which some of computer science is based. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, so let, let's talk a little bit about your organization um, and what your role there is. Tell us a little bit about uh, the APA, uh, kind of its its mission, its core charter, and kind of what you do there. Sure. Um, American Psychological Association is the trade association for psychologists, so they perform the typical functions of a membership organization with roughly 140,000 um, psychologists in it. In addition to that, APA is an academic publisher. That's actually probably its major business unit. We produce the PsycInfo database. It's uh, like Medline, but covers the field of psychology. And we publish books and journals, psychological tests and measures, videos, and the like. The um, PsycInfo database, for example, has about four million records in it. So we, we deal with large quantities of data. And in so in field. your role, you're supporting that the technology that, so, that provides all that content to, to yes, your members? Yes, um, everything from the production of it to business to business interchanges to the delivery to our end users. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so yeah. tell us a little bit about your relationship with MarkLogic. Um, you know, you're here obviously at MarkLogic World. I think you were just giving a talk. Tell us a little bit about some of the things you're doing with MarkLogic and how you're using uh, NoSQL technology to support uh, some of those things you just talked about. Sure. we. Uh, we started out as kind of a, a classic case for the use of MarkLogic back when it was referred to as an XML database, mm -hmm. kind of before NoSQL um, movement of today got started. We were a media company. We had large quantities of XML. We had just gone through the big transform from SGML to XML, mm -hmm. but we had different pipelines all over the place uh, coming through. So MarkLogic was a great opportunity to use a native XML database. The relational databases were putting XML in, but it was kind of early days. It wasn't scaling, whereas MarkLogic was built for it. So it was a very natural fit, and we also kind of knew what to do with it, get all our production to terminate there. And we grew from that to using it for business-to-business -business exchange. Um, and then finally, uh, moving our search into MarkLogic. Mm -hmm. uh, so you've seen the kind of the evolution of MarkLogic over a number of years. Yeah. Um, how would you characterize kind of the direction they're moving? Is it more to a full featured uh, kind of approach database platform versus kind of a more specific niche tool that it was maybe a few years back? That, that was kind of exactly our experience and it coincided well with our, our needs. Mm -hmm. uh, once when we moved our search into Mark Logic, the biggest gain that we saw actually was in our data flow. We cut 40% off our time to market because we produced the data in the same place that we mm -hmm. delivered it, and mm -hmm. it was a fast, fast move from there. But it also meant that um, kind of all the angles of that publishing business were flowing through Mark Logic, and then the uh, then our public website decided. They wanted all those search features too. Mm -hmm. So now we had multiple websites using Mark Logic, and all of a sudden it was in a different place in our infrastructure. Instead of being uh, there for a very specific function, it was now the core place for data services to happen. Mm -hmm. And it's, it meant we needed to think about it differently. Mm -hmm. And uh, fortunately for us, Mark Logic was also thinking about it right. differently. Um, and how was that uh, value delivered to, to the users of, of the data? What, what were you seeing in terms of their behavior 
and their feedback and what they were doing that they couldn't do before, they could do better? Because uh, the first thing people noticed just was the data getting to them more quickly, but um, also live alerts, um, which had been a little bit of a specialty feature before. Now, um, anyone, whether they were students or academic users or members in the member services area, uh, for example, could sign up for alerts, um, either ones we had prepackaged or um, anything that they wanted to create. So people noticed that. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in some ways, some of the features were things that people didn't notice, that is they, they wouldn't notice that you could take all kinds of related data, act as if it were the same, and your type ahead still worked and your highlighting still worked. Um, so some of the changes, just everything worked the way and, that and you expected it to. Did the increased speed and access drive an increase in consumption? Um, yes, it did. Uh, when, when we first launched that search, uh, the feedback all around was it was zippy. And <laughs> <laughs> so zippy, I like it. That helped, and then on our public website, it also allowed us to be more of a communication channel. Okay. We were we were able to add features like uh, what we call best bets or APA recommends. So someone could throw a term at us, we could show them um, things that we thought they might want to see, uh, documents that we knew were of some importance in the field. We could, at the same, we could show that on the same page we could adjust our relevance algorithms to, to tune for okay. them. Um, so a lot of those features, I think, just, um, it helped people find things, but it also helped us communicate things right. uh, right. to people. And Any big surprises? Any uh, positive unintended consequences of suddenly this improved performance? Um, well, of course, uh, one of the uh, things you get with improved performance is they always say in technology, the only thing that grows you know, faster than, than uh, more storage, more speed, is the demand for more that's storage. Right, that's and, right. Then they just want more, right? More, more better, speed. faster. So uh, <laughs> we, we learned how to do clustering and scaling really quickly uh, right. because more applications went on to, to Mark Logic and mm -hmm. uh, usage went up. So. Yeah, we'll talk about, you know, we hear it at the conference here in Mark Logic's marketing around there, the only enterprise NoSQL mm -hmm. database. So, you know, when you talk about the term enterprise, you know, what does that mean? What does enterprise grade really mean to a practitioner? From your perspective, you know, certainly as you started to use Mark Logic for a number of use cases, um, kind of scaling that out, uh, clearly it became a critical part of your business. Um, and I'm, I'm guessing whatever enterprise grade means to you was important to you that it uh, have those yes. features. In, in, what are some in, of those things that Mark, Mark Logic provides from an enterprise grade capability um, that allows you to have confidence in it you know, to support so many wide ranging use cases? Uh, the clustering and the configuration management came a couple versions ago and they were greatly desired because all of a sudden many different applications needed to interact with MarkLogic and if we made a change we just we needed to test it um, in a much more major league way and we needed to be able to deploy potentially to multiple environments we needed to scale up the DR uh, capabilities and uh, we, we were also particularly grateful for the extremely smooth uh, DR swap over. Um, part of that's the way the clustering moved. Also, part of it is just the, um, the code is in what they call their modules database. So deploying your code is transactional just as uh, deploying data is. So you do not have to worry about what's going to happen to your files while you're deploying code. The old stuff's there. This stuff's there, you know, end, end of story, and uh, that's good for deployments, but it is also really good for, for DR. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so another, you know, important topic here, of course, semantics. Talk yes. a little bit about that and what, how that's translated at your organization to actually provide real value to your, to your members. Right. Um, semantics, yeah, in part, allow us to diversify how we look at the data. We started out pure X query, and, uh, of course, in the NoSQL world, we headed to, to JSON, and uh, with the RDF triples, 
Uh, it means that we can look at the data as relationships, as you'd kind of expect at the American Psychological Association. Um, relationships are important things. Right. I mean, you can think of relationships between you know, people, entities, but also uh, between a condition and its treatment. I mean, just a lot of things where we want to capture that information. Um, so in that sense, it allows us to model what's going on in a more direct way. Uh, but in addition to that, semantics brings types of computation. It's, it's a type of data representation, but then Sparkle is also a way to reason on it. And that allowed us to do uh, some things that made our business pretty happy pretty quick. Uh, a simple one, APA produces guidelines in psychology. And at one point, they, they had one on diversity. Um, I think minorities and the like, and they wanted to know, well, did this have much impact? Um, we could do the traditional thing. We could get a citation count or maybe a download count from the website. But with semantics, uh, a push of the button, and I could take that guideline and say not only who cited it, but who cited them and who cited them. And you could just watch how it permeated the field. Mm. Um, you can see some papers will kind of go a certain distance, and then they've hit their max. Others you can just see them um, yeah, that's a much, a much more everything. Powerful approach. So um, yeah, really we, we could we could show um, our CEO and and his board uh, really quickly what happened. Mm -hmm. And then, that's great. And then you just came out of a session before we got you on. So what was yes. your session on for the people that weren't yes, able to attend our, the session? Our session was on the dramatic and glamorous topic of continuous integration, <laughs> <laughs> but that's, uh, which uh, yeah, is a means of making sure when you change one thing that you didn't break something else. And uh, again, it's a reflection of the extent to which Mark Logic has just permeated our infrastructure that we need to be able to build you know, a robust application. And we also need to be able to have Mark Logic as part of a multi-tiered application. Uh, taking advantage of what pretty much everybody's doing these days with HTML5 stack. We want to have you know, Angular sitting there on the user's browser or you know on their laptop or their phone. Um, we use Node in the middle. Right. We use Mark Logic on the back end. We want a very smooth flow. And we also want things modular so that we can plug one component uh, into another. And continuous integration provides the discipline to make sure that uh, each piece is tested when a change is made. Um, not, you know, not the least of which is, of course, you can set this up so that if anybody broke anything, then mm -hmm. everybody gets an email right away. And, <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, we've got just a couple of minutes left, so I want to give you an opportunity to talk a little bit about what, what's on your roadmap. I mean, when you look at what you know, Mark Logic's doing in terms of developing the database and the new features, I'm sure that's got a lot of ideas going on in your head about what we can Indeed. do next. What's kind of, to, to the extent that you can share, what's kind of top of mind for you, and what are the things you're going to be working on the next six, 12 months? Um, one of the things is uh, greater uh, visual presentations of our data. Uh, nice as it is to have search and facets, uh, you know, just right now, for example, uh, you can you know, search on an author and get a nice list of their publications. But of course, in today's world, what people would love to see is uh, Infographic. a picture of the author. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So we we have a, a lot of those coming, you know, down the pike. Whether it's people or topics or organizations, um, another one is the ability to build much more complex tools. Uh, we've We've done a little bit in the area of providing tools for practitioners or educators or students, um, but we're we're trying to do a lot more than um, content is helpful, but um, right. it, it's a more active world. And, and then what um, about mobile? Are you seeing a big impact on mobile in your world, or is that not necessarily hit this, this group um, that hard yet? It has. I mean, that's the reason for wanting the HTML stack, and okay. it's the reason that much as I love semantics, the thing that I was the most excited about in MarkLogic 8 was Angular Node JSON being uh, native to it. Because yes, you you, you will be uh, blasted out of the water if you say you're going to uh, put something out there that it doesn't work well on a on mobile, the mobile device. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Fantastic. Well, some great insights, Beverly Jamison from the American Psychological Association. Thanks for joining us on the Cube. Thank uh, you. Appreciate it. Hopefully, we'll see you back here next year at Mark Logic World. Um, yeah. Thanks for watching. Stick around. We'll be right back live here at Mark Logic World 2015, uh, right after this quick break.